like this weird competition of cool. You take a reef shot to the side of the head for a wave like that. If I can win this, this will be the greatest moment of my life. All the girls are surfing so well. They're beautiful inside and out. Going skagless is a whole nother realm, like a fast version of body surfing. There's something about just getting in the ocean and cleansing ourselves from everything else that's going on in the world. My job description is student, student of surfing. Board Stories TV is proudly presented by Cholo's Homestyle Mexican in Haleiwa Town. Waimea Valley on Oahu's North Shore. And OC16, 100% original, 100% local. Aloha, and welcome to Board Stories. I'm your host, Chris Atronic, here about to guide you through another great episode of Surf and Stoke. This time on the show, we look into the life of North Shore girl Zoe McDougal, taking us through a day in her life. We also check out a trailer for Cyrus Sutton's new movie, Island Earth, diving into the topic of GMO in Hawaii. Boarding brand Brunati shares their spring action reel, and Hawaii's Tori Meister talks about the ups and downs of his surfing career. There's a feast of goodness coming up, but first off, as always, get ready for our Tube of the Week, starring the champ himself, Mr. John John Florence. Take it away. This Tube of the Week focuses in on a crazy sandbar setup that formed a backdoor pipeline on the first day of February. With the pulsing north swell piling sand up on the backdoor reef, thick-lipped mutant double-ups beckoned a small group of tempters, including world champ John John Florence. The sucking up steps made just making the drop tricky, and not knowing what the wave would do down the line left much to chance. But leave it to John John to find the diamonds in the rough, adding up two time, wave after wave. Final roll of the dice saw John driving down the line, eyeing up a looming section, drawing him through the tube with the ideal line to pose under the curtain. Picture perfect for Hawaii's champ. Stay tuned for a day in the life of North Shore girl Zoe McDougal, right here on Board Stories. I'm 16 years old. I'm from the North Shore of Oahu, and this is a day in my shoes. A typical day for me, I usually start with a surf check and check all the breaks along the seven mile miracle. And wherever it looks best, I usually paddle out. I grew up surfing Sunset, and when I got a little bit older, started surfing VLAN, Rockies, Pupakea, Aokai, off the wall. There's so many choices, like, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Got a whole lot of love and time to waste. I like to keep my cross training a regular thing throughout the week. I've been training for a long time, probably since I was like 
13. I think cross training is really important just to keep you in like peak physical health so you can handle anything that you're going to come across in the water. Throughout my day is pretty flexible because I'm homeschooled so I can fit my schooling in in the morning or the evening or if I'm behind then all day. <laughs> It's my second to last year, so I'm trying to finish math this year. I'm in Spanish 2, Chemistry, Government, but I think that's Economics in the next semester. <laughs> On a good day of surf, I try to surf as much as I can, or as much as my mom will let me. <laughs> maybe like two or three sessions a day, like throughout the day, or maybe just one really long session and see how tired I get. The North Shore has a really unique, raw beauty about it and it just, I think it inspires people to have a really happy and healthy lifestyle. Growing up here, everybody's always just focused around the ocean, whether you're surfing, diving, body surfing, like you're always in the water, like it's your playground growing up here. Up next on Board Stories, the new film Island Earth digs into the GMO issues here in Hawaii. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Board Stories. Here in Hawaii, where we have an abundance of prime fertile agricultural land and a long growing season, the presence of GMO crops and pesticides has become a hot topic. Surfer and filmmaker Cyrus Sutton explores all sides of the issue in his latest movie, Island Earth. Mm. This is the world's best papaya, man. <laughs> GMO papaya, rainbow papaya, nothing better than this. And we're not going to stop until they go! Are you guys with me? This is the biggest environmental issue of my generation and my kids' generations. How are we going to feed the world without destroying the planet we depend on? Kauai have three growing seasons, so right off the bat they're using three times the amount of pesticides they might use in Iowa or someplace like that. The stuff they're growing here on 11,000 acres feeds no one. No one eats it at all. I live in the open air lab that tests food that goes on your dinner table. I'll say this on camera, I don't have a scientific issue with GMO. Frost resistant strawberries and drought resistant beans. Oh man, can we grow more food and feed the world? Now, the whole GMO movement is about selling more of my chemical, not using less. The industry is suing our government, saying no. It's not that our products are safe. It's that you don't have the power to force us to disclose to you what we're spraying. You want to believe that you're going to use these tools for good. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be trusted with this to change the society or to change the world. Food is a means of control, a means of power, but it's also provides a pathway for people to reclaim their power from a system. Hawaiian society invented entirely new ways of producing food. And they were extraordinary agronomists. Right now there's a revolution of people rising up who want to grow their own food. He ali'i ka aina, he kaua ke kanaka. So if we take care of this land, what will it do it for will us? It will take care of us. Oh, well, yeah. It'll take care of us. When we return, boarding brand Brunati showcases their team in a fresh new edit. Board Stories will be right back. Burrito. Taco salad. Black bean nachos. Yum. Fresh fish tacos. Mojito. Margarita! 
homestyle Mexican food, and the best grinds in the islands. Cholos at the North Shore Marketplace. Live the dream! Stay tuned, Tori Meister sits down for our cameras, coming up next on Board Stories.
emotional support for board stories is provided by Waimea Valley, where Hawaii comes alive. Check them out online at waimeavalley.net and give them a visit next time you're on the North Shore. My name is Tori Meister, 28 years old, and I'm from Kailua, Kona, Big Island. Professional surfer Tori Meister has seen some ups and downs in his career, and this past year has been one for the Big Island native to remember. Between massive swells and serious injuries, Tori is ready to put his head down and charge forward. This has been a crazy year for me. I was kind of coming back from the most major injuries I've ever had in my life. You know, this double up back door wave came in. It looked like it was really good and it was kind of getting windy and I started paddling. I was like, oh, I don't know, it's snug. And then it was kind of late and I was like, oh, this is a sick one. I'm just gonna go and go in, whatever. And I think I hit like a little warble or something. And I just did this like one of the weirdest falls I've ever had, just straight like on my stomach and like real sideways. And I just hit really hard. And uh, I was like, oh, that was a crazy kidney shot, like whatever. And I went up and just got a glass of water and it felt like I was drinking like fire or something. It was the craziest sensation ever. It was just like instant pain, like real sharp. With the prognosis of a ruptured spleen, Tori was forced to stay off his feet for several months. Once back in action, a nagging hip turned out to be a torn labrum requiring surgery and another bout of rehab, keeping him out of the water once more. You know, it's been about a year and a half now and it finally feels like I don't have to worry about it every single day, it's not as sore. And so that, that's something that's really special for me, you know, my body coming back and feeling healthy again. And the whole year was pretty much just injury, injury, injury. And when I came back from that, I was like, all right, I'm good. Like, I'm gonna go surf heavier waves now because I'm good for a while. Like, <laughs> I've been out for like a whole year, I paid my dues. <laughs> like, I'm gonna go surf jobs. <laughs> Going into the winter season last year, it being El Nino and stuff, it was just the most wild winter I've ever seen. You know, we had so many huge swells and um, got aboard and got my stuff together and actually went to go surf, you know, Jaws and stuff. And that was kind of like this crazy eye opener for me. Like it was a whole aspect in surfing that I never really done much of. And it kind of like stole my heart. <laughs> it kind of was everything I wanted to do. I, you know, every time there was a swell, I was just saying, I gotta be there, I gotta be there, I can't miss one. It was just kind of been a roller coaster of emotions for me. I mean, when you find something new that you're super excited about, it's kind of, you know, kind of something that it's the only thing you want to do. And that was kind of Jaws to me. Aside from Tori's newfound love for Jaws, competition surfing has always been his bread and butter. Finishing this year with the career best result. Competing has been, you know, the main thing, and I was actually really excited going into Sunset because, you know, I, I read this WSL post and said if I won Sunset, then I would qualify for the World Tour, and that's, you know, that's been a dream of mine since I started surfing. Going into it, I was like, well, you know, I, I got to win this thing, so that's that's what I'm going to go out there and do. It. Tori put in an incredible showing at this year's Vans World Cup of Surfing, and although he fell short of the win, the result is one he still holds high. Finish sunset and make a final was just incredible. It was just, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I've actually never made a final in Hawaii, so it was really special for me. It's, you know, it's been a long time coming, I think, and I've hit a, like a bunch of semifinals and quarters, but never quite got there, you know. So it felt really good to finally get there. And, you know, I felt, you know, I didn't win the contest, but it felt like I was winning. <laughs> Spending much of his time while in Hawaii at his second home on the North Shore, Tori has found quite the affinity for the special stretch of reef known as Backdoor, despite their rocky relationship. Backdoor, oh man, that place has been one of my favorite waves since I was a little kid. I remember surfing it, I think when I was probably eight years old. And it was only like a three foot day out there. And it was like my first or second session and I hit my face on the reef. And I like split my, under my lip real bad and it was kind of just, you know, gushing out blood. And I was just from duck diving away. wave. The wave just slammed my face straight into the reef. Fear has been something that she's given me right away. <laughs> I still love the wave more than, you know, any wave in the world. It's the most perfect, fearful, crazy. You never, you, I've never been so pushed down into the reef in my life from any other wave where it just really just feels like it's trying to push you through the reef. <laughs> 
when you get hurt, one thing you always learn is how much you appreciate surfing and how amazing the gift is that we have. You're out for two weeks and you just start itching, oh, man, I want to surf, I want to surf. And then when you're out for three months, you, all you want to do is go surfing. I was pretty nervous when I was coming back. I remember my first session at Backdoor, I was, you know, feeling really scared and, you know, that, that wave, it wasn't the heaviest wipe out of my life, that's for sure. It definitely wasn't the biggest wave I've ever fell on, but it almost killed me, <laughs> you know. So it made me have a crazy respect for the ocean, obviously, like I always have had, and Pipeline. For me, I was like, well, you know, you either gotta surf this wave 100% or just don't surf it. And that was kind of like my whole game plan last year was like, just go for it as much as you can because I want to live every day to the fullest, you know? And I want to go surf a crazy big wave and I want to I want to do these things that I haven't really done because for me, I wouldn't be as satisfied if, if I wouldn't push harder. I would be really disappointed in myself. So the first session at Backdoor, I was really disappointed in myself for not pushing myself. And I was like, never again, like, I want you, you know, you got to go all out or nothing. <laughs> no more second guessing. <laughs> Right on, Tori. Good to see a Hawaii boy finding his stride. Hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget, for more great content, check out presurfmagazine.com. Before we close out, we leave you with our spill of the week. As for me, your host, Chris Atronic, I'll see you in the water. Aloha. This spill of the week brings us to the rare backdoor sandbar setup that had heads spinning. North Shore native Kona Johnson was keen to give it a go, eyeing out some crazy ones. Going for broke, Kona dropped in on the throatiest waves, hoping for the best, but unfortunately ended up finding the worst. But his efforts didn't go unnoticed, earning him this spill of the week.